All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the beginning of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. If you followed along our fifth edition task list series, we're going to go with the same format, meaning each individual task list item will get its own video and we're going to narrow the information down to the essentials we believe you need for your exam. So, of course, we're going to start with A, Behaviorism and Philosophical Foundations, and A1, Goals of Behavior Analysis as a Science, which includes description, prediction, and control. Now, if you did follow along for that fifth edition task list series, you will notice that much of the task list is unchanged. A1, for example, is the same, description, prediction, and control. Despite that, we are still going to dedicate a video for each task list item just to make sure we're as thorough and complete as possible. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe for all of our videos. We post three BCBA videos a week along with RBT videos and our Sunday shout outs. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you do pass your exam, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. So what is our goal in behavior analysis? Our ultimate goal really is to improve our clients' lives and the people around the clients' lives in a meaningful, socially valid way. And how do we do that? Well, to do that, we have to develop a understanding of the socially valid behavior that we're looking at. We need to be able to define that behavior, analyze the behavior to try to determine function and why it's happening, and then we have to be able to ultimately establish control over that behavior in order to change the behavior. If we can't control the behavior, we can't change it. What we're trying to do is identify observable truths and facts about our environment. We're doing this through objective observation and measurement. We are data-driven, we stay objective. We very rarely ever want to give our subjective opinion on behavior that we can observe and measure. Use the data, not just what you feel. So each level of scientific understanding is going to get us closer to our goal. We're going to be able to describe behavior, predict why it happened, and then through experimentation and manipulation, control that behavior to start to make meaningful change. Let's start with description. Description is the lowest level of scientific understanding, where we're simply just saying what happened. We're observing the behavior, we're documenting the behavior, and we're just describing the behavior. This is the very beginning of understanding why something is happening. So just think about any behavior you might have done in the last hour. Give me a description. Don't tell me why it happened. Don't manipulate anything. Just tell me what happened. That is description. What occurred, typically antecedents and consequences, right? Usually before, and after the behavior. We're not hypothesizing yet, we're not predicting yet, and we're not manipulating yet. This is what we have to remember about description, prediction, and control. Just when you're describing the behavior, don't start to make hypotheses, right? And in real life, of course, you're going to immediately hypothesize functions and whatnot, but especially for the exam, you wanna be precise. Description is just that, just a description of what the behavior maybe looks like, maybe what happened before, what happened after. So for example, the child's mom told him he could not buy a toy, so he screamed. The mother then gave him a snack. This happened five times. We're not describing a function in that example. We're not saying this is why it happened, and we're not manipulating anything. It's exactly what occurred, right? The child's mom said no toy, child screamed, mother gave snack, happened five times. We've yet to hypothesize and we've yet to manipulate anything. So that brings us to our prediction. After we observe that situation in the store several times, we can start to predict or hypothesize why the behavior is occurring or the function. So now we're looking at correlations or relationships between the events. And through prediction, we can start to anticipate the behavior. Anticipation of behavior occurring is so important for behavior change. If you can anticipate the behavior, your intervention is going to be stronger and stronger and stronger. 
So developing good pattern recognition, making good predictions about why the behavior occurs, what follows the behavior is going to be essential in behavior change. Still, even though we're making hypotheses and we're looking for correlations, we're not manipulating anything yet. We're not quite there yet. For example, the function of the child's behavior is likely to obtain a tangible. So now we're going a step further. Not only is the child screaming, but we're saying likely because he wants a tangible. Each time he screams, he is given an item and then the screaming stops. So I, our hypothesis is the child is screaming to get that tangible. This is our prediction. So now that we've made our prediction, we have an idea of what the function is. We've established correlations. What is the final level of understanding? That is going to be control. We, we determined the function. We've hypothesized why it's occurring. We now need to write our treatment plans and implement that treatment plans and manipulate variables to produce those changes in behavior. So we're now introducing independent variables, which is typically our interventions and environmental modifications to try and control and change the behavior. And all these manipulations are going to be based on those descriptions and predictions, which is why those two initial steps are so important. Control is the highest goal or level of scientific understanding or behavior analysis, right? We are trying to reliably evoke or abate behavior through our manipulations. Only if we can control behavior can we predictably change it. For example, when the child screams for a toy, the mom is now ignoring the screaming and leaving the store. So our independent variable, our manipulation, let's say, is extinction. After three weeks, the child is no longer screaming at the store due to extinction. We have established control or experimental control over that behavior. We have reliably changed it through the manipulation of environmental variables. Now, you can see why all three are essential to good behavior change. We can't get to control without a good description and definition, without a good hypothesis, and then only then can we write a good treatment plan to reliably change that behavior. Like we said, we're going to be doing a video for each task list item. We might start rolling them out slowly and hopefully more quickly as we move towards the new year. Until then, please like, subscribe for all of our video updates, which are three times a week. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.